I want a divorce. What? Divorce? There's no need to be with you anymore. This is the first time I heard my husband's voice in three months. Since we got married, my husband has turned into a dominant man and has been making sarcastic remarks towards me. And he has been ignoring me for the past three months. Oh, really? Fine, I'll divorce you. I don't want a failure wife like you. He replies with a grin and starts signing the divorce papers. I watched in silence. You suggested a divorce yourself, so there won't be a division of property, okay? I understand. Well, somebody's accepting today. But you're going to be miserable. You have no savings, no family, you're a divorcee, so now you're going to be a loner. Let's see how you're going to live. I turned my back to my husband with a smirk on his face and left the house later that day. But soon after the divorce, my ex-husband was eager to contact me in some way. My name is Shirley Sanders, a 28-year-old wife in a dual-income family. I met my husband, Wilson, through a friend. Wilson works for a major travel agency and is very dedicated to his job and very kind to me. I had little experience with the relationship, but I immediately fell in love with him and we started dating. After three years of dating, Wilson proposed to me. Surely, will you marry me? I'll make you happy. Of course, Wilson. I'm so happy. Wilson tells me softly as tears stream down my face. We'll have to go tell your mother. I hope she'll be happy to hear the news. I'm sure she'll be overjoyed. Her only daughter is getting married. I grew up in a single-parent household. When I was four-year-old, my father and mother split up and my mother took me with her. I have only a dim memory of my father and I never saw him after that. I think he was a kind man, but I never heard about what led to their separation. I never asked her about it because she didn't seem to want to talk about it. Anyway, after that, my mother raised me by herself. It was a humble life, but we supported each other. The bond between my mother and I is strong. When I told my mother about my marriage, she jumped up and down with joy. Shirley, I hope you're the best. Wilson, please take care of Shirley for me. My mother said with tears in her eyes and Wilson replied with a smile. Of course. Seeing this scene, I felt the happiest I have ever felt. I knew that with Wilson, we would be able to build a warm family. I was convinced of that. Later in marriage, Wilson and I had an immediate disagreement. The reason was that I decided to keep working. Wilson wanted me to quit my job and focus on the housework. And at first I agreed, but when I told my co-workers about it, they wouldn't let me go. I didn't dislike my job. In fact, I found it very rewarding, so I told them I would keep working. You promised you'd quit your job. Why would you say you'd keep working after that? Wilson told me in frustration, to which I responded, You don't have to be so angry. You know, it's always better to have a bigger family income, right? I wanted you to take care of the house, though. You're not going to be able to do all the housework if you're working, right? Well, I'll do my best to take care of the house, so I just want you to let me work. Wilson sighed to my request. I guess I don't have a choice. I'll let you work, but don't cut corners on the housework, okay? I'm not going to do anything. Okay. I couldn't dare to ask him to share the housework in the heavy atmosphere. After that, as he declared, he never tried to help me with the housework. On the contrary, he began to complain about my housework. Perhaps because he didn't like my choice to continue working, or perhaps because of his personality. One day, at dinner, he said out of the blue, Today's food is so bad. I can't eat such a thing. What? Did I do something wrong? What did you not like? I tasted the food before serving it that day, 
and I didn't find anything wrong with it. I asked Wilson what was wrong, and he answered with a contorted expression. Are you so stupid that you can't understand unless I tell you everything? What? Why don't you know my tastes, even though you're my wife? But I couldn't help but look down at the floor. Then Wilson got up and was headed somewhere. Where are you going? Huh? The deli down the street. I'd rather go to a deli than eat something like this. Wilson walked out the front door, ignoring me, calling out to him. I was so surprised that I couldn't say anything back because I had never heard him talk to me like that before. But at that time, I still thought it was a coincidence and that he was just having a bad day. I had no idea that he would continue to torment me after that. Wilson's sarcasm gradually escalated, taking advantage of my inability to speak back strongly because I had made the choice to continue working. A strand of hair is on the floor. The coffee is lukewarm. He would call me for the smallest things and scold me. What I thought was a manly personality turned into an extremely demanding husband after marriage. Even so, I continued to endure Wilson's unreasonable treatment. I don't even know if there is such a thing as love anymore. Still, I endured it. Not wanted to disappoint my mother, who was so happy about her marriage. Then I got a call from my mother asking me to come and see her. I hurried over to see her, but she had lost a lot of weight, and the time I hadn't seen her. Mom, what's wrong? You've lost so much weight. And what did you want to talk about? To which she quietly replied, "Actually, I found out that I have cancer." It has metastasized, and I only have three months to live. Oh no, you have cancer! I didn't want to believe that. I broke down in tears right there. They said that my mother's cancer was progressed to the point where there was nothing they could do. Mom, I'll stay with you as long as I can. I'll be there for you. Surely, thank you. But make sure you don't inconvenience Wilson. There was no way I could tell my mother, who was so concerned about Wilson, about the unreasonable treatment I was receiving from him. When I returned home that day, I told Wilson about my mother. That's why she's going into the palliative care unit. I'm going to go to the hospital regularly and take care of her for a while. Wilson was obviously not concerned about my mother and said. What? What are you going to do about your work and the housework during that time? I'll try talking to my coworkers about work, and I guess I'll need some help with the housework. Wilson snickered. So you can take time off from your job that you've been continuing, even though you can't do the minimum housework properly, just for your mother. Well, because my mother has, and on top of that, you want me to help with the housework. Don't be ridiculous. You'll still be in charge of all the housework. But I couldn't help but lose my words. I had expected a little help from him since this was about my family. However, my expectations were dashed. If you don't do the housework properly, I won't let it slide. Wilson glared at me with such words. I recall my mother's words. Don't inconvenience Wilson. And all I could do was nod my head. From then on, my days were hectic. I would spend my spare time visiting my mother at the hospital and go home to take care of the house. It was difficult for me to concentrate on housework, partly because of the pain of seeing my mother getting weaker day by day. Two weeks after I started visiting my mother in the hospital, Wilson called me. Hey Shirley, my shirt isn't ironed. The shirt Wilson has is definitely not ironed yet. I'm sorry, I haven't getting a lot of sleep lately. I'll get to it now. Don't make excuses. My husband yelled at me. I'm too busy taking care of my mother. I said in a cheerful voice, to which Wilson coldly replied. 
You married me, and you think your mother is more important than me? My mother is terminally ill with cancer. So what? You're always making excuses. You failure. Your parents didn't educate you well. This is what happens to children of single parents. His words were so harsh that I couldn't say anything. My husband's contemptuous attitude continues. Oh, there's no use to even talk to you anymore. Since then, Wilson stopped responding to anything I said. He ignores my existence as if I never existed in the first place. No matter how much I tried to talk to him, he wouldn't answer. Even to my words of "good morning" and "good night," he would look away and sigh. As I led this life, I became mentally drained. The sarcasm was hard enough. But to be ignored was more painful, as if he was telling me that my existence had no value anymore. I burst into tears in my mother's hospital room. What's wrong, Shirley? I'm sorry, Mom. It's nothing. Shirley, come here. My mother seemed to realize something. She stroked my hair with her skinny hands, just like old times. Shirley. You are having a hard time, aren't you? Now, listen carefully to what I'm going to tell you. And my mother told me something surprising. Wilson's neglection continued after that. I continued to do the housework as I told, but Wilson began to silently throw away my meals. I began to have stomach pains whenever I was at home, and only when I was in the hospital room with my mother could I truly feel at ease. However, such a life did not last long. After a long battle with illness, my mother passed away. I went home after the procedure at the hospital and talked to Wilson. I've already texted you, but my mother passed away. Wilson didn't answer anything. The funeral is the day after tomorrow, and I'll be making arrangements. Wilson ignored me and went into the other room. It was a clear sign that he didn't want to attend the funeral. I was at my wit's end. After all the sarcasm and neglect, he wouldn't even attend my mother's funeral. I couldn't be married to this man any longer. At that moment, I made up my mind to divorce him. But there was something I needed to do first. Dressed in black, I went to the funeral. The day after my mother's funeral. I approached Wilson, who was still ignoring me. I have something important to tell you. My husband was still ignoring me, so I stood in front of Wilson and held up the completed divorce papers. I want a divorce. What divorce? This is the first time I have heard my husband's voice in three months. Yes, I can't be with you anymore. My mother passed, so there is no need to be with you anymore. Oh, really? Fine, I'll divorce you. I don't want a failure wife like you. He replies with a grin and starts signing the divorce papers. I watched in silence. You suggested a divorce yourself, so there won't be a division of property, okay? I understand. Well, somebody's accepting today. But you're going to be miserable. You have no savings, no family. You're a divorcee, so now you're going to be a loner. Let's see how you're going to live. That's none of your business. Well then, I turned my back to my husband with a smirk on his face and picked up the divorce papers. Then I took my prepacked belongings and left the house later that day. A month later. I was in my new house, looking at my mother's picture as usual. Then suddenly, my phone rang. It was Wilson. I put the phone down and pretended I didn't see it. But after that, the phone rang every few minutes. He was blowing up my phone. He was so persistent that I had no choice but to answer it. Hello. Hey, I want to ask you something. Where are you? I sighed at Wilson's shouting over the phone and gave him the address of my new house. A few hours later, 
Wilson showed up at my mansion. He stands at the gate, looking at the house with a blank stare. What in the world has he calling me so many times? He exclaimed in surprise when he saw me at the gate. Hey, you live here now? Why could you ever live in this kind of place? He looked at me and the house alternately with a confused expression. I led him through the living room. Hey, explain first. How can you live in this place when I kicked out without property division? Wilson spat at me as I drank my tea in silence. Are you talking about this house? My father gave it because he heard I'd have nowhere to go after my divorce. Huh? Your father? You only had a mom. And so I explained. My mother had told me to call my father when she passed. My father was a wealthy man who fell in love with my mother, who worked as a housekeeper, and I was born. But apparently, my father's parents didn't allow him to marry someone of such a different status. They continued to harass my mother, and eventually she became ill. So then she promised to never get involved with them again and left the house so that I wouldn't have to bear their harassment. My father made it seem like he had no connection with my mother in front of his parents, but in fact, he kept in touch with her for all these years. He even provided financial support when needed. When my mother found out that I was having marital problems and was in pain, she gave me my father's contact information. We later met at my mother's funeral. I missed you so much. My father hugged me in tears. His parents, who had opposed to their marriage, were already gone, so he promised to be on my side from now on. I told him how Wilson had treated me and that I wanted to divorce him. My father looked me in the eye and said, "I'll get you a house to live in as soon as you get divorced." So that's why I live in this house. I'm not a loner. I'm still working and not hurting for money. It's too bad you couldn't see me miserable. Wilson bites his lip and looks chagrined, but he quickly changes the subject. Well, I don't care what you're going through. I'm here today for something else. Have you heard of Miller Resorts, a nationwide luxury lodging company? It's a client of our company. They suddenly said they're cutting contract with us. So what about it? They say it's my fault. I asked them the reason, but they said to ask my ex-wife. What the hell does that mean? I giggled when I heard that. Wilson still looked confused. What the hell? What on earth is going on? Um, do you know who the chairman of Miller Resorts is? Huh? Wayne Miller, I think. Yeah, that's him. I pointed straight to my father. Huh? Why is Mr. Miller here? Wilson stood up with an astonished look on his face. In response, my father clears his throat and answers. My daughter said she's going to invite her lousy ex-husband to her house. What's wrong with her father being here for that? Daughter? So. Surely your father is Mr. Miller. Wilson stands there, stunned, now understanding the whole story. Now that I know what you did to Shirley, I will not do business with your company. If you understand, get the hell out of here. Wilson then became distraught and turned to me. Shirley, if Miller Resorts cuts the contract, I won't be able to stay with my company. Please tell your father to reconsider, and we'll start over too. Let's have a happy family this time. I pushed Wilson away and yelled at him. Don't be selfish. I'll never forget what you did to me. I don't want a do-over. I'll never forgive you, you piece of trash. Wilson had his head down, his face covered in tears. My father grabbed him and kicked him out of the house. Wilson was later fired from the company for his actions. I heard that it'll be difficult for him to get a new job at another company in the same industry because of the rumors about what he had done to me. He is now in a small, shabby apartment, spending his time looking for a new job.
It must be very hard for him with his pride, but I hope he will live his life reflecting on his own actions. I, on the other hand, continue to work hard while living in the mansion my father gave me. I have a good relationship with my father, and although he is always trying to spoil me, calling it help, it is nice to have a family. My father recently asked me if I would be interested in getting to know of his favorite employees at work. I saw his picture, and he seemed sincere, so I'm going to meet him soon. From now on, I would like to be grateful to my family and live a happy life for myself.